Hi, my name is Ashley DeWeese and I'm from Southwest Baptist University. And today I will be talking about the analysis of total cortisol in calves. Here is my abstract for this research. So in this experiment, we evaluated how calves are responding to different weaning methods based off of behaviors and amount of cortisol in the blood serum. In order to understand this research, we also need to understand what weaning is. Weaning is the process in beef cattle of separation of mother from calf to prepare that mother for the next calving season sooner. In traditional weaning methods, there are many stressful events, both physiological and psychological. These responses could be things such as reduced immune system, which causes an increase in diseases, as well as lower quality of meat and unsatisfying living conditions for these cattle. The different weaning methods we used in this research were traditional weaning and nose flap weaning. Traditional weaning is an abrupt removal of six to eight month calf from dam and mother. We did use a nose flap for this group as well. You'll see down at the right hand corner, just so these calves cannot steal milk from other mothers through the fence line. It was a non piercing nose flap though. Then we also used a nose flap weaning group. In this group, nose flap weaning is it allows the calf to stay in the physical dam with their mother, but it prohibits nursing due to that nose flap. We also, down at the left-hand corner, you utilized a non-piercing nose flap for this group as well. In this research, we studied three calves per weaning group, as well as three calves in a controlled group. This controlled group was, a, was three calves with three mothers and they stayed in a dam together. There was no weaning done on these cattle. So what is cortisol? Stress perceived, when stress is perceived by the body, the HPA axis within the brain releases hormones that leads to the release of cortisol in the adrenal glands. This release of cortisol leads to an increased sympathetic nervous system, which is that fight or flight that you see in people as well. This externally is shown, is shown in unruly, more excitable, increased agitation, restless movement, things such like that. And then internally, a compromised immune system responses, decreases in T and B cell production, and a decreased quality of meat. So the benefits of this research Diseases associated with stress cost the animal agriculture industry over $1 billion annually. So being able to decrease stress could decrease antibiotic usage as well, which is a large amount of money that farmers have to put forth to make sure these animals are healthy and able to be sold. It also presents a less stressful living environment for animals, an increase in meat values, as well as easier handling of these more calm tempered cattle. So the data we collected for this was extracted blood from the coxial vein on days zero, one, three, five, seven, and 10. And on those same days, we recorded pen and shoot scores. Uh, just to note, day zero was the day that we weaned these calves as well as administered vaccines. So pin and shoot scoring is how we analyzed the behavior of these cattle. We, the scoring was on a scale of one to six scale being one docile and six very aggressive. It is important to note that in this research, we used calves that were bred by calm tempered bulls. And this is the third generation of that breeding. So this could affect the overall rating due to the already calm nature of these calves. We used three separate pins for each weaning group and the control group. And we also utilized low stress loading methods such as a bud box to load, solid sided alleyway and low motion handling. For pin scoring, you can see on this top picture up in the right, we, this is what the pins looked like. 
uh, it was a 16 by 40 foot pin. We would enter slowly and calmly into the pins and approach the calves to about 20 feet. And we would record their, record the score of each calf based off of pacing, vocalizations, whether the calves were aggressive, trying to charge at us or not. And then we'd record it on the one to six scale. Then the squeeze shoot was scored on the same one to six scale, but we the calf would be led down a solid sided adjustable alleyway and into the chute, which is shown on the bottom right, right here. And it, it then we would lightly restrain the animals with the squeeze chute. Once the animal was lightly restrained by the squeeze chute, we would record on the one to six scale based off of if the animal was being vocal, if it was trying to escape, bucking, all of that sort. Then for the blood extraction, while that calf was still in the squeeze chute, we would collect five milliliters from the coxial vein for assessment of the blood serum um, to see cortisol levels. It's important to note that there were a few times that this blood extraction was not able to be successfully drawn. So once we extracted the blood from each calf, we would store it in a red top tube and immediately place it on ice. Then after all, all collections of blood were collected, we would transport them back to the lab and allow them to clot for 30 to 60 minutes and centrifuge them at these increments for 30 minutes. After being centrifuged, we would pipette each serum into a sterile vial and store it at negative 80 degrees Celsius. At the end of this 28 day research collection period, we took all of the samples and we ran them on ELISA plates to obtain the total cortisol levels within the serum. So these are, a, these are our squeeze shoot scores time on the x-axis being the days that it was collected and on the y-axis you see the one to six scale that we did use. Blue was the control group, green was the nose flap group, and pink was the traditional group. And we took an average of each day for each group. It is important to note that a one to three scale of a shoot score and a pin score is a very docile score still. There might be some vocalizations, but there was no bucking and trying to get out of the shoot. This we do believe is because of the already calm nature of this breed of calf. Here's the pin scores, uh, time being on the bottom and the one to six score, one to six scale score being on the X axis. You see the same blue is control, green is nose flap and pink is traditional. We do see a spike on day one for the traditional groups, although two is still a very calm pins and shoot score. Then here are our cortisol levels, blue, um, then you see on the x-axis being the days and on the y-axis being the amount of cortisol in the serum. Blue is control, green is nose flap, and pink is traditional. Sadly, we do not see a large similarity when comparing the behavior analysis with the cortisol levels. We do believe that this is because of the calm nature of this breed of calf, but it is cool to note that in the first three days, the, the scores are slightly higher as well as in the cortisol levels, they are slightly higher as well. Other than that, there are not many similarities when comparing the two. However, in the cortisol, we can see that the traditional methods did have an increased amount of cortisol overall within the serum and the control and nose flap group were very similar when looking at the when looking at the total amount of cortisol within the blood just to remind you the cortisol group or i'm sorry the control group was a group of calves and mothers that were not weaned and were just allowed to stay in a dam together. And then the nose flap group was a group of calves that could stay with their mother, but 
due to the nose flap, we're not able to nurse from that mother. Just to, just to reiterate that a score from one to three is still considered very docile. And we do believe that this is because of the third generation of calm tempered bred bulls. So in the future, we hope that we think that using a non-docile bred calves could help show a different analysis of the of the pin and behavior compared to the cortisol. We think that that would have a big difference as well as recording the mother's pin and shoot scores. We think that this could show maybe similarities or differences when looking at the different behaviors of mothers compared to calves and possibly looking at different loading methods for these calves and handling techniques. We did utilize very calm, low stress handling methods. And this is not always utilized by um, the industry. So possibly using more traditional handling methods to see if this would change the, the increase in stress and behavior from these calves. I would like to acknowledge Sigma Zeta for granting us money to be able to work on this research. Southwest Baptist for letting us use their facilities and lab equipment. Dr. John Murphy for allowing us to use his cattle and his land, as well as all of my fellow researchers that helped throughout this research project. Thank you all so much for listening.